Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text that engages us this morning as we continue our sermon series entitled God's Greater Story is uh, the epistle from Romans chapter 10. And at this time I invite you to scan that code found on page 6 of your bulletin and uh, refer to the painting that we'll be looking at this morning. Now in 1961, a visitor walked into the Calvin Grove Art Gallery in Glasgow, Scotland, carrying a brick. He found a painting of the crucifixion and started to destroy it. His anger, his violence, his destruction of Christian art uh, was not done out of hatred of Christianity, but out of a love for Christ. See, he objected to the way that the artist portrayed the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, Salvador Dali was the artist, and the painting was Christ of St. John of the Cross. In it, one sees Jesus hanging on the cross over the world. The problem for the visitor, however was one of perspective. See, Dolly had changed the traditional perspective that people have of the crucifixion. Rather than standing below the cross, looking up to the face of Jesus, Dolly asks the viewer, for a moment, to be situated above the cross, looking down upon Jesus, who himself is looking down upon the world. And for the visitor, this stance was sacrilegious, placing oneself above Jesus. Now for others, this stance is divine. Some people see what this visitor didn't see. They see an artist inviting you for a moment to have God's view of the world. See, our Heavenly Father looks down upon the fallen world and sees it through the eyes of His Son Jesus dying on the cross for all people. And this vision, it's hard. Even for Christians to see, as we look at the world, we can often see something that we want to run away from rather than run into. We see the social fabric of God's creation tearing apart at the seams, redefining marriage or breaking it apart or ignoring it altogether. Rather than valuing all life, our world encourages to value only some of life, particularly the life that isn't human. We see rampant poverty, social injustice, riots like we saw yesterday. All of which want to make us leave this world behind and enter into some Christian cocoon and wait for the new creation. How easy it is for us to enter church and turn our eyes upward to the cross and leave this world behind. We, we can forget where we are or what God would have us be doing. We can simply gaze at Jesus hanging there on the cross and forget that we live in the world. And that God has chosen us to be involved in His mission here in the world. How hard it is to, to look at Dolly's crucifixion. Here we, we cannot escape the world by looking at Jesus. No, Dolly forces us to look at Jesus and that when we see Jesus, he asks us to see the world through him. You know, Jesus hangs there below us, offering his life for the world. And he invites us to see the world through the cross, living in God's mission of love. And this is the perspective that the Apostle Paul had upon the world. This is the vision the Apostle Paul was inviting Christians in Rome and Christians today to see. He has called us to be part of his people for his purpose. God's purpose of reaching out to the ends of the earth with Christ's saving love. Now, one of the odd things about Dolly's depiction of the crucifixion is the body of Jesus. If you look closely at that painting, you'll see that Jesus hangs there on the cross without any wounds in his hands or feet. There are no nails piercing his hands, no nails piercing his feet. His body hangs from the cross, but there is nothing that holds him to it. 
Now for some, this detail is disturbing. It makes it look like the crucifixion never happened, or it denies the pain and suffering of the Son of God. But for others, there's another perspective. I mean, there's no doubt that God himself was rejected by his people and nailed to the cross to die, but that is not the only reason that Jesus hung on the cross. He could have delivered himself. But Jesus stayed on the cross, not because he was only human and couldn't get down, but because he was truly God and wouldn't get down. Jesus stayed on the cross because he didn't want to come to this world to save himself. He came to save you. It was the pure love of God that that led Jesus to that cross, and it was the pure love of God that held Jesus up on that cross, offering his sinless life for the sins of the whole world. You know, Jesus hanging there on the cross without nails may not be a realistic picture of the crucifixion. But it is a true picture of what happened on that day. God in Jesus willingly gave his life for you and for the whole world that you live in. And salvation comes to us purely by grace. We know this. And because of this, we are part of God's greater people Saved by grace, called together to be the church. Now, as as Paul proclaims this truth among the Roman Christians, he does so by revisiting a familiar text for God's people. One that they would know very well. Just as Dolly took a traditional picture of the crucifixion and, and, and offered new insights, so too Paul takes a traditional text, one that they know so well, And he asks God's people to hear it and read it again from a new perspective. Paul turns to the book of Deuteronomy, where we see the renewal of the covenant. So if you can remember this story, a part of Israel's history, God's people are there on the edge of the promised land after 40 years in the wilderness. And before they enter into the land, God renews His covenant with them. He reminds them of the relationship that exists between He and His people. But first, God warns the people about how they should view this moment. That this land was not earned, but it was a gracious gift in spite of their stubbornness and rebellion. And at the end of the covenant renewal, God prophesies to the people of Israel and and tells them of what is coming. He speaks of a time when they will actually depart from him again, that they will go back to their rebellion and be exiled to another land, and then God in mercy will come. They will repent and God will bring them back and bring about a restoration. As Moses is going through this, he asks God's people to look into that future, to see that future that lies only in the mercy of God. And and so it's that vision of the future that Paul quotes here in Romans 10. Only as Paul quotes this vision, he adds his own words, his own commentary for emphasis. He, he wants us to see the love of God freely given to all people now in Christ. So we start at verse 6. The righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven? You see, that's to bring Christ down. Or, who will descend into the abyss? That's to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. So for Paul, that day of restoration had already come to God's people in Jesus. At the heart of God's covenant lies not what we do for our salvation, or rather, but rather what God does. For us, you know, we are not saved because we are a mighty or numerous or particularly holy people. No, we are stubborn, rebellious, sinful, but we are saved in His mercy, by His mercy that's made known for us in Jesus Christ. At the heart of God's restoration 
of all things lies the work of God in Jesus. He came down from heaven, entered into hell, and rose again that we might be forgiven and be part of God's people who live by grace through faith. So as Paul is offering this vision of life in the promised land, he helps us to see Jesus. But he also helps us to see Jesus at work in the world through his people. See, as you listen to this text, notice how the promised land is not limited to some small piece of ground in Israel, but rather expands to include the whole world. And listen as Paul reveals this world-encompassing mission of God as we start reading there in verse 11. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing His riches on all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. In Paul's words, we hear this incredible emphasis on everyone, on all. Jew and Gentile, God's mission is to bring His salvation to the ends of all the earth. So for Paul, this, that mission of God is not something that merely hangs in the sky, it is something that's unreachable, unpractical. No, Paul brings that mission of God down to earth into the very mouths of God's people. You know, he asks this series of questions to which the answers are obvious. But how are they to call upon Him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in Him of whom they have never heard? How are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. See, God brings His people into His kingdom through the word of faith that His own people proclaim. Paul understands that he is part of this mission and he knows this truth about God's greater story. That when God brings people into his kingdom, he brings them into his mission. God gives every person a confession of faith, a word of faith that when spoken, touches others with the power of God. And the gospel truly is the power of salvation to all who believe. So that you... You have a purpose in God's kingdom. God uses you in his mission of sending the gospel. And Dolly's painting offers us a picture of of just how God does this. There in the heights of heaven, we see Jesus on the cross at the top of the painting. Jesus in love offering his life for the world. But then there below them, is the world. It extends outward across a lake into the distance. This love of God is a love that will reach the ends of the earth. The question is, how will they hear? How will God make His saving love known? Well, there at the bottom of the picture, you see the answer. Two men going about their task of fishing near a boat. Nothing would set them apart from others as God's special instruments to the world, but that is exactly what happens in the ministry of Jesus. He comes and calls plain fishermen to follow him. You know, these men are not formally trained in rhetoric. They are invited just simply to live with Jesus, to listen to Jesus, and to witness what he has done. And then, Jesus gathers these men together on Pentecost and sends His Holy Spirit upon them and they become apostles, those sent out to bring the good news of salvation to the ends of the earth. I mean, these were fishermen. What did they know about public speaking? What did they know about the intricacies of the Greek language? It would be like sending a child with a box of crayons and asking him to adorn the Sistine Chapel and and retell in beautiful pictures the story of God. But God and His work, it, it doesn't come through human eloquence or wisdom. 
It comes through the foolishness of the gospel. A story so simple that even a child could tell it. A story so amazing that only God could bring it about. I mean, through their simple words, God's work of mission was done. And through your simple words, His work, His mission is done today. You don't need special training to speak of what God has done for you and the greater story that you have been brought of. You are an expert witness to that. No, the Word is near you. It's in your mouth and in your heart. God has called you, chosen you to be His people who live by His promise and live for His purpose. His mission to bring salvation to the ends of the earth. Now, after a visitor attacked Dolly's painting with a brick, it was removed from the art museum. And through careful work, the painting was restored and over time brought back to the museum. And now today, thousands of visitors go to Glasgow to see this painting. They stand there and marvel at the beauty of Dolly's work. Paul, however knows of another restoration that causes God's people to stand there and wonder. Paul sees that in Christ, God has fulfilled his promises to Abraham, that through this one nation, Israel, God has brought salvation to all nations of the earth. And through this one person, his son, Jesus Christ, God has offered a love that encompasses all people. So as we come to worship today, Paul asks us to stand here, To look up and see Jesus. But Jesus is not all that we see. Paul changes our perspective so that we see Jesus at work through his people bringing salvation to the ends of the earth. How beautiful. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all human understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.